Okay. Okay. I uh, I was sitting in the tent this morning, not a tent, the kind of teepee thing, um, and and um, a police car pulled in, a real expensive looking police car, and. Uh, since they didn't come in my direction, I yelled out, hello, hello, and, and they yelled back and came came over, and uh, we had a talk. Now, obvious from the beginning to me is that there was something different going on from how I'm used to seeing the police act. They come in and they have a job to do and don't care about what your opinion is or anything. Uh, here we had a, a woman by the name of Susan Runciman, whose dad uh, was, until he was 75, a senator representing this area. And he had been a cabinet minister for Ontario, um, and and uh, she is uh, media relations and community mobilization with the Ontario Provincial Police. Nice lady, not not uh, the type you're used to seeing. Of uh, um, they're not interested in anything about you. They're just there to do a job. Uh, the woman she was in was um, a woman called Robin. Don't know her last name because she wrote Robin on a Brockville General Hospital card. Now, for this region, Brockville is like headquarters. Kempville is a branch, Broadville is headquarters, and it's got the big courthouse for the region, and uh, the general hospital and the OPP uh, always go as a couple uh so as to not get the type of problem municipalities have found when the problem is mental. And um, uh, they need they need basically to be together to, to deal with that. Here, they quickly realized that there is no mental problem. And Jennifer was on the phone and got to explain to them a number of things about her being kidnapped and dumped in New York and then kidnapped and put on a plane, that kind of stuff. And I got to tell them about how uh, after Jennifer was kidnapped uh, and and um, reflecting upon... Uh, Tom Byberg's death at the hospital and then calls from uh, or, or requests from Hydro to pay ridiculous sums uh, in, in the last one something over $19,000 um, that they shut off the power and that I've had basically to live without a wife, without a tenant, and um, with cats that I have to take care of, uh, with no power, no no way of putting in any uh, any means of having the cats go into a, a um, center for for pooing that they just basically are in the dark like me and they do it wherever and that along with the temperature outside having gone from 35 above to 35 below 
depending on the season, uh, for uh, the last four years. Uh, They were flabbergasted is how they appeared to me. Now, on the other side, you always have to worry if you have somebody that's of a higher echelon and is interested in hearing my story um, and and taking notes and pictures and stuff, you have to wonder what what has changed, what is going on here, and the answer to that I don't know yet. They um, then decided they wanted to buy my lunch and went to town and brought me back some Chinese food. And the one from the hospital said she'll be back tomorrow and she'll do shopping for for the things that I normally would shop for, including cat food and beans and tomatoes and peas and corn, that type of stuff. So she, she'll be back, but the police woman doesn't need to come back, so she's not coming back. So, um, total, from my point of view, and not forgetting how uh, bureaucrats often act as, as hypocrites, uh, I thought the visit was different. Why now, certainly somebody has to be directing them, because they wouldn't know me from Adam, not old enough, I've been around. Now, this girl's father was a senator. He'd obviously know me, because he, he was on Parliament Hill while I was there. Uh, never stopped to talk to me, mind you. But in, in those days, I didn't live here. I lived in Hull, so I wasn't part of any constituent. It was a conservative government. And uh, under Brian Mulroney, and um, liberals were the opposition. Anyways, I... I probably got to tell them more about the story that leads up to here, filing of charges and stuff like that. They seem to have read something off either police files or the Internet. I don't know. So that's why I couldn't answer the phone. (laughs) And when they finally left, I wanted to eat something warm, and I ate part of my lunch they brought, and I'll eat the rest of it tomorrow morning for breakfast in the frying pan. But she'll be back, and I don't know exactly if she wants to take me to town to shop or if she's going to go to town and shop and bring me the the shopping. So there. There. Now you're caught up. So this is like uh, the next series of events from dealing with Susan. Did they mention her? Or this is something separate? Or I didn't quite get that. Can you repeat that again? Yes, I said, is this like the next... Uh, steps with dealing with Susan, or is this unrelated, or? I mean, Susan Smith? Yeah. Okay. I have no idea if if they've been in touch with each other, but I suspect, because there's an election coming next month, that uh, somebody wants the story out, or somebody wants the story quiet (laughs) that that is my suspicion whether I'm right or not and whose side is pushing um, 
them to come and see me at a higher level of bureaucracy, I guess, if you consider somebody that works in a hospital or somebody that works for the police bureaucrats. And the uh, the one who works as a uh, media type has a role of media relations. So, are they trying to get some advanced knowledge of what the bigger story is and why they're now stealing money out of my bank account? Um, from my my pension fund, and why is it that the police came and and cut the tops off trees, the forty nine Sitka spruce, and why hydro won't do anything about anything, and why? Bell Canada won't do anything about anything except hang up and get in the way and cause all kinds of communications problems between Jennifer and I. I don't know. So I've never really been able to figure out what the reasoning is behind all of this. Although I probably have it as one of my nine or ten possibilities, but which one is is the one that scares them the most, I have no idea. It's not possible for a human being to come across this many problems with the system, the only common denominator being bureaucrats, over a 30-year period. Each one could probably make a book. And, And to write a book and get it printed these days you have to put a line in the front pages that this is fiction. So that defeats the whole story. This is not fiction. This is reality. It's reality and it's happening to Jennifer and I and all of the democracies of the world who believe that the citizen is important. But there are still some left. Any further questions? Oh, just, you know, some... um a couple of us are trying to get something together for you for the winter. And we we're thinking about some kind of tent and wondering, wondering what your status is on clothing or sleeping bag or anything, wood burning stoves. There's some tents that have like stoves that can go in them. Is that something you'd be okay with or, you, or that are insulated? Um, yeah. Uh, as far as, uh, Eating is concerned. Um, the equipment that I have will keep me keep me fed. Mind you, the thing is that there is no diversity in basically what I've eaten for the last three or four years, um, and it's basically around. Uh, beans and and tomato and peas and and corn um, a few um, uh, 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 things that I eat in the winter time more than going outside are 
uh, canned uh, pork, canned, uh, uh, that's a kind of a ham, canned beef, and canned salmon. So those four or five items are basically my diet, except when I go to town, I have bacon and eggs. And I'm equipped to do that. Now, the room I have in the house um, serves me well in uh, allowing a place for a bed and and uh, covers that I can sleep all dressed. Now, Half the ceiling fell in on me recently, uh, a while ago, Uh, and I've covered the hole uh, with with garbage bags and a staple gun, and unless more of it falls, um, I'd I'm okay to go in at night and get into the blanket. Of course, there's no no electricity, no no water, no nothing. And the, the biggest problem is keeping water from freezing under blankets in the living room so that the cats have uh, water at least and the goats. The um, problem is you can't you can't overstock anything because it freezes for six months and it becomes useless. So what what I needed more than anything else is a well that I can pump water from by hand and at least get a pail of water to give to the animals every now and then year round whether it be the cats or the goats Um, that's that's the biggest uh, uh, problem I have in the winter time, uh, I've been sitting inside the back seat of a car, um, unheated, um, and I had uh, I had hoped that a neighbor would come by and offer something, but no neighbors have ever come by, let alone offer anything. Uh, I have uh, two electric heaters that I had in the house, and I could have put an extension cord and and paid for the electricity to the neighbor had they allowed me to plug in, but it never happened in the last three years. So it was a matter of doing what you can to keep water you buy from freezing within a matter of a few days that uh, is the problem now I may end up having to move completely out of the house if the rest of the ceiling were to fall in I don't have big enough garbage bags over uh, well there's, there's one tent there's one tent that we were looking at um, it looks like it could probably fit, I want to say, like five or six people in it, which, but what it is is it has a, the wood burning stove in there that can be used at least for the hours it remains. Are you, uh, Danny, are you yes. looking at Amazon? Yes. Are you looking at Amazon Canada or Amazon US? Uh, Canada. It's, it's A lot of the stuff I'm looking for is like, from, from Canadian places, because I think they deal with the cold a little better, so they have more yeah. things. <laughs> okay, because well, you and I should get together, because um, I have I have Amazon Prime, 
I don't know if that one is a prime uh, one. Yeah. But, uh, and also, um, the one of the one of the Andes and his girlfriend were they booked a flight to Canada on October seventh to the twenty first, and they want to come by and help you and you know whatever they it? can it. Andy who? from who? Scotland from Scotland, remember? Oh oh yeah. Okay. Uh, one of them's gonna come by with his uh girlfriend and they're gonna, you know, come by there and help out with whatever yeah. they can. And they might even take you to those places too, like a sporting goods place where you can look at the stuff that you want, like a tent or something like that, and maybe you can actually see what one would work best for you. And then yeah. we can all, and then we can decide from there, and or you know, we might not have to deliver anything. Um, we could just maybe go there, and then we could all, you know, wire each other money, and then he can get it, and you can pick out what you want, or you know, because if you see it in first hand, it might be something that you feel you yeah. can use. The more, the merrier. <laughs> yeah. A stage of the game, it's uh, basically survival of the fittest. And if it hadn't been for Jennifer, I don't think I'd be alive today. Sure. Other people like you and and uh, Jordan and, and others have uh, helped in different ways, but none local. Yeah. You know? No. Yeah. Nobody. Nobody. No. None of the neighbors up there. The town of Campville, uh, Oxford Mills. Nobody has yeah. helped. The neighbors up and down County Road 18 know what his situation is. Nobody up there offered any help. Yeah. That's Canada. <laughs> I think they're all in the same group. You know, the, there's something that links them all together. And I'd like to know, you know, um, somebody should ask the media how come they've never reported on me. And if the answer is, well, they've been told I'm crazy, uh, they would say, what kind of media takes that as evidence of anything? Did you ever go and have a discussion with the person? Because it seems that when people do, they don't have the same opinion you have, if that's your reason. Or or is there a higher level uh, in the media where you've been told, uh, don't print anything on Keeley or don't report anything on Keeley? Because they certainly have lots that they could talk about. So I don't I don't really know which of the possibilities is the one that affects them the most. I suspect that my knowledge given to me mostly by the cell suggesting pre ice age activity and the uh, generation of the electromagnetic system for uh, genetic engineering that that created the population that lives on Earth today. Uh, and the fact that they've now reached a, a point of uselessness and they must be destroyed. If that's the real reason, I don't know. All I know is that if they wanted to kill me in a manner uh, which they usually do, they would have shot me and that would have been the end of it. Or hung me off a rafter someplace. But since none of that has occurred, and we're dealing with a period of time now from... 
which basically is 23 years plus 19 is 42, is it? Well, yeah, 42 years they've been at me, and anything I'm trying to do, uh, mostly just to tell things as I learn them from other people, and uh, of course the cell since 2006. What is it that that causes them that much fear? Has to be money, and if it's money, it's gray nuns. Has to be media, and if it's media, it's led by the Globe and Mail. who have influence over all media in Canada. And if it's uh, provincial government and uh, the fact that they, uh, they send people to Southern California to attend rituals that involve uh, rape and murder, Those are all possibilities. Among others. So they haven't killed me. They haven't shot me. They haven't hung me. They're hoping I'll freeze to death or die of old age or uh die of uh, lack of nutrition that comes about from eating the same thing and not getting a variety that you normally would have. A tent would be useful, I guess, Uh, put up before it snows. No, it's just got to be able to be very sloping and you can't it has to be a, um, not a kind of tent that caves in if snow fall on it it has to be really stiff up there so the snow slides off okay if the snow builds up around it yeah yeah there's a lot of those kind of mountain hiking tents that they have for people who go up like you know mountain climbing Zero. These uh, these two women that came today stated categorically that uh, what they have to do immediately is get me food, uh, a well, and um, a heating system. That's what they said. Now, how much they can do about any of that, I have no idea. But uh, um, I've told them that the most important thing to me is to get, uh, that's Jude calling. Uh, Most uh, important thing to me right now is uh, uh, if I could have a, power supply to heat my heaters in the in the truck and car. Yeah. That's your and he, he he's not leaving. <laughs> he's on the phone I, but <laughs> not answering, so maybe I you can send a message, I don't know. I just texted him. Is it okay? So, survival has been combined ingenuity and the right supplies at the right time from Jennifer and you guys with sweaters and socks, whatever.
Yeah, so let's see what she says tomorrow. Okay. So that's it for now. I'll let you go, call Jordan, tell him. Okay. Bye for now. All right. Talk to you guys later.